Moving to chain guard images has big benefits in terms of image size and security. A lot of the time, it can be as simple as just changing the image name in a Docker file or Kubernetes config, but in more complicated cases, it can be a little bit more work. So I want to give my top five tips for migrating applications to use chain guard images. Tip number one, use the latest dev images when you need a shell. So chain guard images have no shell or package manager by default. And that's great for security, but it's not so great when you need these things, such as in a builder image or when you're debugging. And for those cases, we have latest dev images, which do have these things. So for example, if I try to get a shell in this Nginx image, it tells me no, because there is no slash bin slash sh in the container. Um, but if I use the latest dev image, it works. So that does include a shell, and it also includes a package manager. So I have set the user to be root here, and now I can add packages. Um, I can also use debugging tools like ping, or look at the file system, etc. Tip number two, you can install any shell you need. The dash dev images and Wolfie base use the ash shell from BusyBox by default. And your entry script designed for bash might need some work to be compatible. But you can also install different shells and utilities to reduce the work important scripts. There's no reason to be stuck on the ash shell if you really need bash or ZSH. Tip number three, use APK search to find the utilities that you need. So if I start a Wolfie base container, I can type apk update, and I'll get the latest list of packages. I can then use apk search. Um, so for example, let's say we're having trouble with an entry point script that's designed for bash, and it includes group add commands instead of add group that's used in BusyBox. Um, so I could port it to use add group, or I can use apk search and ask about a group add command. And it tells me it's in the shadow package. So I can just do apk add shadow. And now I can call group add directly. Um, similarly, um, I often forget where the LDD command is. But this time, if I do apk search, it returns a few possibilities. But I know I'm only really interested in the package that has the LDD command. So I can use this syntax, cmd colon, which tells it to tell me which package supplies that command. And in this case, it tells me it's POSIX libc utils. And I can even do apk add cmd ldd rather than type out POSIX libc utils. And now I have ldd. Excellent. Tip number four, beware of differences in entry points. The entry point in chain guard images is likely to be different to other common images due to the lack of a shell. And that can sometimes be confusing. So let me show you an example. If I run the Docker official Python image, it puts me in to a Python interpreter, which makes sense. But if I pass it a Unix argument, it actually executes that Unix argument rather than putting me into the Python interpreter. And the way it does that is via a clever entry point script. Now in the chain guard image, if I can spell, that will also put me into uh, the Python interpreter. But if I give it the Unix argument, it tries to open the file echo with the Python interpreter and things go wrong. Um, so that is a crucial difference to be aware of, and it does sometimes catch people out. Okay, on to our final tip, tip number five. Do remember our images are glibc based. So our Wolfie Linux distribution does use the APK package and format from Alpine, but we are a completely separate distribution to Alpine. All our packages are compiled against glibc, which is the most common standard C library, unlike Alpine, which uses Muscle. Now we chose glibc just for compatibility reasons, glibc being the, the most commonly used C library in the industry. But please remember, it's not possible 
to mix Wolfy and Alpine packages in the same image. Okay, that's it. Five tips to help you migrate to Chain Guard images. Please let me know what you think and also send me any of your own tips.